my favorite the reverse flick boom just like that that this one is in the satin finish this one's in the stone wash i mean i often debate when i'm buying a knife which one i like the most out of the two something that it has over the pyrite is it has the flipper right i really wish my pyrite had a flipper here that would just completely make the pyrite perfect for me and this guy has all four of them what is going on guys welcome back to the channel my name is miguel today we're going to be reviewing the sankop saxi and this one is a very sexy knife Brand. <laughs> all right uh, lame jokes aside uh, i am super super excited to share with you guys uh, everything about this knife all the feedback everything i've been able to gather over the last couple of weeks this is a very fidgety edc to say the least it has four different deployment options you got the button of course it is a button lock after all uh, you got the flipper yeah right there right nice flipper action you got the thumb deployment right so that's always nice to have last but not least my favorite the reverse flick boom just like that. Take a look at that. Bam, 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 bam. All right, one last time. Bam, fair measure. There it is, guys. So let's get started here getting a quick measurement on this guy. Let's see what we got here. Total overall length coming in at around, I wanna say, yeah, it's gonna be just under eight inches, right? It's gonna be like seven and seven eighths uh, of an inch, right? Total length. The blade is gonna be around, I wanna say, three and a half. The actual cutting edge being around three and a quarter. Right, the handle is gonna be around four and a quarter. Right, that gives you an idea right there as far as measurement goes. Well, let's do a quick um, comparison here to some of the knives that we always check in the channel here next to the Paramilitary 2 right there. It's gonna be very comparable, almost the same size, but the PM2 being a little bit bigger. The Para 3 right here is gonna be a little bit smaller compared to the Saxy, but that gives you an idea right there. Let's uh, compare it also. Let's throw in one more spider co. Here we go, the Smock. Spider Coast Mock right there. I want to say almost as uh, long as the Spider Coast Mock, the Mock has a little bit of a longer handle right there, right? But again, that kind of gives you a little bit of a comparison. All right, let's do a few other ones as well. Right here next to the Demco Brothers, uh, AD 20.5, that is the Shark's Foot. This one is the uh, Clip Point Blade right there, that gives you an idea. I want to say very, very comparable in size, right, to the Clip Point variant right here. Uh, of course, the Shark's Foot Blade is always going to be a little bit shorter in overall length. But again, some nice comparisons right there, size comparisons to give you a ballpark idea. Of course, you know what's going to be here, the Senkat Crawley, right, the brother uh, from Senkat. The Crawley, also a very fidgety EDC. Uh, the review on this guy should be live on the channel already, so check it out if you haven't already. And of course, the CJRB Pyrite, another very fidgety EDC. Uh, review for that one also live on the channel. If you want to check it out after this video, you certainly can. But again, that also gives you a good size comparison idea there. Last but not least, here's the Rap Model 1, and here's the Rap Model 2, right? <laughs> so it, uh, definitely gonna be closer to, I don't know, it's definitely in the middle. I can't even say if it's closer to one versus the other, right? It's gonna be somewhere in the middle between the Rap Model 1 and the Rap Model 2. You guys be the judge of that right there. <laughs> this thing, just like I said with the Crawley review, this thing is pretty much the same as the Crawley, right? It is awesome, very fidgety action right here with all those four deployment options I went over earlier. So what do we got going on here for this guy? We have a satin finish blade right there. This is a drop point blade, right? there this one is rocking a 9 cr 18 mov steel a very common uh, budget steel for this price range by the way this guy comes in around 45 to 50 dollars right same range as the Senkot crawley pretty much everything that i said about the crawley on the crawley review is pretty much what i'm going to end up saying for the saxi during this review because these two uh, not only are they siblings from the same manufacturer for the same brand but as far as the fidgetability there's your word for the day as far as the fidgetability they both go a long long way and they're so satisfying to deploy they're so satisfying to edc there was even a time where i had this in my pocket and i had to force myself to switch over to a different knife just because of how solid how comfortable how satisfied i was daily carrying this knife uh for almost a weeks at a time right which is what kind of want to put that into perspective all right let's now compare here as far as length and height on the pocket here right back with the model two back with the model one it compares a lot to the model one because of how uh, thick this blade is right definitely a much thicker blade right there much more comparable to the wrap model one as you can see right there and back with the crawley and pyrite i want to say somewhat close to both both the pyrite and the crawley are going to be slimmer than the saxi next to the demco brothers right there regardless of blade shape they're both going to be uh, i believe a little bit wider than the saxi just because of how that blade uh, folds in and how much it sticks out of the handle when folded and last but not least here are the spider co pm2 and 
and pair of three right there. Obviously the spider coals are going to be much more wider on the pocket when, when folded, when tucked away because of the spidey hole, but it's not always the case, right? Check it out here next to the spider coast muck, which has a slightly different design. The spidey hole is a lot smaller and therefore it is a much thinner knife compared to the Saxy right there. All right, let's do a quick carry profile. Here it is next to the uh, Rap Model 1, right? Very comparable to the Rap Model 1 compared to the Rap Model 2. And the Rap Model 2 is going to be uh, much smaller right there, as you can see. The Rap Model 2, the Rap Model 2 is going to be a lot slimmer right there, as you can see. Here's the brother, the Crawley. Crawley on the right, Saxy on the left, right? Very comparable. CJRB Pyrite is going to be a little bit slimmer. Demco AD 20.5 is going to be a little bit slimmer as well. PM2, very comparable, although a little bit thicker than the PM2. Pair of three, right, compared to the pair of three, just a hair thicker than the pair of three. And last but not least, the smock. Spider Coast smock is, uh, yeah, definitely going to be a little bit thicker than the smock as well. Since we're here, let's do a quick hardware check. By the way, guys, my tools are going to be linked down below in the description. They're a part of the Strabido tool set. Has all the drill bits you may need, uh, screwdrivers, all that good stuff. Links down below. Those do help out the channel. I don't extra cost to you. My guess is very similar to the Crawley, right? Uh, maybe cheating here a little bit. I know for a fact that Crawley had T6 on the pocket clip and then T8 everywhere else, right? So that's my theory, all right? With that being said, here we go. T6 on the pocket clip, yeah, that is confirmed. And then T8, yeah, T8 on the body screws, including the pivot, right? Including the pivot, this one has a pivot uh, screw on both sides, something to keep in mind as well. You may need two screwdrivers to tighten or loosen this guy here with the pivot on both ends. And uh, I like that the one, the extra mile to make the body screws also a T8, right? Other companies, manufacturers, they cut some corners, they make the body screws T6, but this one is pretty much T8 all the way around except the pocket clip speaking of the pocket clip this guy is very deep carry no doubt about that very deep carry pocket clip very similar to the crawley right there if anything it's pretty much the same exact pocket clip right <laughs> copy paste parts from their parts then but hey it gets the job done right all right so very very recessed uh pocket clip screws right there so you can see from this profile shot right here from this angle i'll give you an example of what is not a recessed screw right and that is the uh reich p801 i also did a review on this guy on the channel not that long ago if you want to check that out but uh, yeah, one of the things that I was picking on this guy is that the screws, they certainly stick out quite a bit uh, on this guy, right? Check out the difference, right? You can barely see the ones in the Saxy, but they are the ones on the Reich uh, P801. They definitely stand out quite a bit. All right, that being said, let's get a quick blade stock thickness on this guy. All right, 0.11 inches, just like the Crawley on the thickest part of the blade. And then on the very tip, I want to say, I know this guy is very pointy here very tip is going to be 0 0.02 inches, right? That kind of gives you an idea right there. As far as the blade, this guy is rock solid. Yeah, this is a 10 out of 10. No questions about that. Very, very solid lockup. It is a button lock, so a lot of people always, you know, question the uh, strength of a button lock, but this one is very, very well made. Of course, I mean, you could probably put it to a much harder test than just testing it against your palm, but again, I'm not trying to, you know, to go that far just to prove a point. So for what it is, right, that lockup right there right let me get a quick close-up right so there it is when you push the button it lets the blade free by the way this blade is on uh washers so that's why the action is so solid and reliable on this guy and again you know the blade is going to open up like this and then as soon as it hits boom right there right it's going to lock in place right in order to release have to push the button right there and then let go of the blade right back so very very nice get a quick weight on this guy here shall we right so for comparison purposes right the brother here the sibling from Senkut the Crawley came in at 3.3 right so 3.3 ounces on that guy the pyrite which is another button lock again very fidgety as well 3.5 even though well 3.6 even though this guy is an old metal design here but the Saxy right my guess is gonna be around 3.5 3.5 all right, also 3.6, right? Look at that, 3.6, just like the Pyrite. Now the Pyrite is all metal design, right? So 3.6, and one last time for fair measure there, 3.6 ounces on the uh, Saxy as well. Of course, this wouldn't be a review video if you don't do a paper cutting test, right? So keep in mind, again, this guy is not out of the box sharp. I've been using this guy, ADC and this guy for way too long now. So there's a possibility it may need a little resharpen. You guys let me know on a scale from one to 10. Let me know in the comments, of course, 10 being the sharpest without further ado here we go all right nice clean first cut right there a little bit of a tear you know it just kind of depends on how it catches see like right there 
really depends on, on how it catches from the get-go, right? It might cut a little bit and then, you know, kind of catch at a different point. Well, there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comments how this guy did. Does it need to be resharpened, right? You guys let me know. I want to say just for uh, sake of uh, clarity and transparency, right? Aside from obviously opening envelopes and letters and Amazon packages and things like that, the other piece of heavy use that my knives will see is cutting through cardboard, right? Cutting through cardboard is going to be one of those things that uh, I'll do from time to time, you know, cutting some cardboard for, you know, getting the fireplace started or, you know, something like that, doing a campfire, or maybe I'm cutting it from my composting warms and things like that. Uh, this guy uh, has been through a lot of cardboard as well, so that could explain a little bit of why the sharpness isn't all there, uh, but it still has retained a decent amount of it, right? You guys uh, let me know in the comments. I look forward to the comments to see what you guys' rating from 1 through 10 will be. Right, once again, we have a 9CR18 MOV satin finish blade that is a drop point. Uh, it is rocking this black micarta, very similar to the black micarta on the Crawley as well. I kind of wanted them to kind of match a little bit right there, and uh, they kind of get that job done um this guy's available in other options different handle materials as well different colors but uh there it is i want to say i'm not necessarily a big fan of the blade shape itself it kind of gives you kind of like kitchen knives type of vibes but i mean it gets the job done right it looks nice solid uh and this is a flat grind all the way to the top here right very flat grind going all the way around uh again i would have i would have also preferred g10 handles i'm not personally the biggest fan of my carta but if my carta is good for you then you have nothing to worry about there looking inside looking at the guts of this guy we have some milled uh, liners so the liners are milled uh, should help with the weight a little bit right there all right you guys should be able to see that get a good view these spacers are nice and uh thick right there very solid spacers you notice probably there's like this baby spacer right here <laughs> this is uh, a little thin looking spacer and uh, i kind of came to the conclusion on the last video too on the last review and it's the fact that they don't have both of these knives don't have a lanyard hole as you can see there's no lanyard hole going on so the way they kind of solve that issue right for you is they they kind of added a much smaller uh spacer here where you can kind of loop around some sort of string or whatever your lanyard hole you can just loop it around this little tiny little spacer right here in the back uh something that i really like about this guy is the satin finish i gotta say me personally i love stone wash and i love satin finishes right so that's why i'm glad that this one is in the satin finish this one's in the stone wash i mean i often debate when i'm buying a knife which one i like the most out of the two but honestly you can't go wrong with either or i, I like kind of sort of the flare the shine of the um satin finish right here on the right versus a stone wash sometimes a stone wash you really can't go wrong with most of the time but that is up to you for preference so if you're leaning more towards satin finish then the um saxy here on the right is going to be the way to go if you're leaning more towards stone wash then the crawley right here on the left is going to be uh the way to go for you now I want to say I've been EDC in this guy in case I in case I didn't mention this already I've been EDC in this guy for weeks on weeks on probably a couple months now and I want to say as far as alignment goes right let me kind of put my hand here for contrast you guys be the judge of that but that looks pretty center to me right there so no doubt that's how it came out of the box right Civivi uh, we knife send cut right they're all very well known for their quality out of the box their quality check is phenomenal right so I'm very pleased right there with this guy uh, like I said earlier right, I had to push myself onto other knives for review purposes because other Otherwise, I would just keep this thing in my pocket for weeks on end, right? That being said, I'm trying to think of what else I wouldn't necessarily like about this guy. There's so much that this guy has going for it that it just checks a box for me, right? I love the fidgetability, like I mentioned earlier, right? For me, an EDC knife could also be a knife that, you know, uh, you use obviously for daily cutting tasks, but, you know, it has that fidgety factor to it. You could just sit there and just kind of play around with it a little bit in a safe way, of course, and it kind of satisfies that fidgetability itch that most of us have. So this is the Civivi button lock right so vivi send cut sister brands all under the we knife umbrella all right what they did with the button lock and you probably remember that from the button lock review check it out if you haven't already by the way is that the only deployment option on this guy is the button right so button to open button to close and that was about it right uh now they did make a newer version of this guy which also has a flipper so then you will have flipper and button deployment but this guy you have it all right you have the button you have the flipper and both thumb stud and reverse flick deployment so you really can't go wrong with this guy it just has so much going for it 
part, right? Uh, you would also compare this guy to, let's say, the Pyrite. It's so, so close to the Pyrite. This is probably gonna be a different video as far as my top, top fidgety knives of all times, and all of these button locks are definitely gonna be on that video. Spoiler alert. But uh, yeah, something that it has over the Pyrite is it has the flipper, right? I really wish my Pyrite had a flipper here. That would just completely make the Pyrite perfect for me if it had a flipper as well as a button and thumb and reverse flick deployment. And this guy has all four of them. So, I mean, that's something to keep in mind uh, if you're really looking to get the best bang for your buck, right? If you're looking to get the most fidgetability out of the $50 or so you're gonna be spending on this guy, this is it right here. Crawley or Saxy from Senkot, right? Can go wrong with these guys. I honestly can recommend them enough if I'm being honest. That being said, guys, if you made it this far into the video, you guys are the real MVP, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, by the way, by the time you're watching this video, it's very possible that the review for the Spyderco Para Military 2 will be out. So if that's the case, uh, I'll put a card right here for you guys to check it out. I love, love, love my PM2. Uh, it's such an awesome uh, EDC. So if you want to check out that review next, go for it. Thank you guys for all your support. I love you all. Take care. Peace.